it's actually a bit scary these uh, guard dogs so I'm going to walk past here very quickly so today I'm going for a new walk here in Lusaka I'm actually going to the showgrounds where I used to ride horses when I was a child and I'm going to see if it's still there and uh, what exciting things we can see on the way today uh, we are trying to cross uh, this road so hopefully we'll be lucky soon and luckily we managed to cross the road quite an experience so now we are on our way just to give you an impression you can see the roads are very well maintained and again you can see the security on the, with the high walls and the glass on the fences it's even painted on the gates that they have uh, guard dogs which is you know very safe to have guard dogs to, for prevention of thieves when i lived in zambia as a child we actually had four guard dogs and uh, there were times when we only had two but when we had four there were no burglary attempts at all because we had a very very good leader guard dog who made sure that no thieves came in and you have to be careful when walking here look where you're going so you don't fall down this pretty scary the beautiful green trees so nice but actually it's a bit uh, cloudy today so it's actually a bit cold <laughs> so I have to wear my sweater even though I'm in Africa and here on the other side of the road you can see a nice mosque and the sky is actually pretty nice and blue such a lovely blue sky here in Lusaka but we did actually have two robbery attempts when we lived in Zambia but only when we had two guard dogs uh, before we were leaving we gave away two of our guard dogs uh, six months early so the last six months we only had uh, two guard dogs instead of four and, but uh, we had a very reliable night guard a very honest uh, trustworthy and good night guard so he heard the robbers outside because the dogs they start barking so they warn and he heard uh, the robbers so then he went uh, outside the bedroom of my father knocked on the window and he told my father there are burglars outside there are robbers they are planning to go inside the house what do you want me to do and then my father said don't turn on the alarm because uh, these robberies they are planned so if we had turned on the alarm they would have just come back another day so then my father he called the anti-robbery squad and they were outside the gate within five minutes and all the robbers were caught so we're so lucky they didn't even manage to get inside the gate and there you can see a lady selling maize uh, can we have uh, two maize What time? 13 hours. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's okay. You can keep change today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And these maize, they taste very nice. It's actually like a speciality from Zambia. So it's actually when you come to Zambia, you should taste this grilled maize because <laughs> it's not like you can go to Norway and buy grilled maize in the shop for us. Very nice. Do you like the maize, Maya? Yes! You actually walked past and said, I want to eat the maize. Yes. And here you can see by the traffic lights when the car stop, they sell basically everything here. Very hard working people. Yeah, yeah. You, are, you are working here every day? And what are you selling? Ginger, lemons, yeah. everything. And every day when the car stops here, you try to sell. Every time, every time. Yeah. You are how long? How many hours do you work here per day? Today. Yeah, or every day. How, how often are you here? Like? For morning, at 18. What is it like? To, I think you are the only woman working here now, on at this job. Yeah, it's, um, selling the bags. Yeah, you're selling the bags. Yeah. yeah. What is it like to have this kind of job? Yeah, it's very difficult for me. It's just because I don't have, I don't have anything that that I can. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but it's. Uh, it's very 
it's very good to see women also starting to work and doing what men also were doing before. So, yeah, good luck. And like I said before, it's very difficult to cross the roads, but here at least they have built a bridge to cross. Here is the bridge. I'm going to walk across it and show you a view of the busy roads. There's no traffic lights, so a very brave person is directing the traffic. And I'm so happy that there's a bridge here, because or else I would have to <laughs> cross the road without it. I don't think it would be possible. All the traffic that is here and the hardworking people selling everything really. And here you can see the shopping mall Manda Hill. And now we cross the bridge and we're getting closer to the showgrounds. And there's so many cars here in Lusaka. Doesn't seem so poor at all. And again here we have to watch where we're going so we don't fall. And here's a closer look of uh, Manda Hill. And what you can see in Zambia now is that actually more and more women they are working hard and doing the same jobs as the men only did before. Which is very inspiring to see. And here is the entrance to the showgrounds. Finally we are here. First time I actually saw a real dustbin here in Lusaka. So now <laughs> I'm going to try to walk the same road as I remember driving or being a passenger in car when I was a child and let's see what is here. It looks very different from what I remember. So I'm wondering if there are any horses here left. And here are some guard dogs doing their job. It's actually a bit scary these uh, guard dogs so I'm going to walk past here very quickly. And here it says Gimkana Club so I must be in the right direction after all. And this place used to be Busy Bee Nursery, where my sister went, but it looks like it's no longer there. Now I'm in the area where I used to be in, where they used to have shows. And I used to, I was in a competition here with a pony called Moon Dancer. I remember very well. Look at the rainbow colors. And you can even see the rainbow in the water. So nice. Such a beautiful area. And here you can see what was the warm-up area. And now I found the area where all the stables are. <laughs> so fun to recognize it and still the roads are a bit the same. They have nice horses in Zambia also. Hi! And now I'm going to walk up to see the stable where the horse that I rode was and the riding school. It's that Zambia is actually the place uh, where I learned how to ride. And I actually did a lot of competitions after I returned to Norway. And here you can see what the Zambian stable looks like. It's very nice actually and the weather is pleasant here all the time. And as a child I loved riding horses so much. And I really enjoyed every day I came here to the showgrounds where I can ride the horse. First I went to riding lessons where I learned how to ride. I started riding when I was seven years old here in Zambia. After I improved my riding skills I also got the opportunity to ride the school horses in the afternoon. It was very fun and then later uh, we had the horse that we borrowed for six months called Moon Dancer before we left back to Norway. And this is where I had my horses but now I think it almost looks closed. And this area, it used to be just green grass where they let out the horses to run around. But it doesn't look like that anymore. And I'm walking down to see if I can find the area where they had the riding lessons when I was a child. I think I found the arena where I learned how to ride. Though it's not so easy, you know, so many years later to recognize everything. And just to remember a small funny story, there was uh, an old pony called uh, Selina, or Serena, Serena was her name actually. 
and she was very smart actually but uh, she found out that if she pretended to be lame you know then she would be taken out of the riding lessons so one day she was a bit tired and she pretended to be lame and everyone thought she was lame and she was of course taken out of the riding lesson uh, but of course you know she was so happy to be taken out she was started running and then of course we could see uh, the riding teacher could see she was not lame at all and was taken back again and we're so lucky we got to borrow this pony so the children could try small ride do you like riding Sonia yeah. you want to start riding lessons yeah yeah it's a very nice pony yeah it's a very nice pony yes You can pat the pony and say thank you. And we were so lucky that we met a woman and she was so kind to just let the children go for a small ride on this beautiful, lovely pony. So they were so excited and so happy and they want to start riding lessons and everything. And here it looks like the dressage uh, course or the dressage riding arena is probably the correct term. But all the times I, I rode, I rode for so many years in active uh, jumping competitions and I only had one bad accident and that was actually in Zambia when I was very young. I borrowed one of these riding school horses after school and my usual horse uh, Noddy, he was uh, lame that day. So they gave me another horse called Matabele Drum and I think he used to be a race a horse or a polo pony or something, I don't remember. And I just went for a normal ride and then another horse uh, galloped past me and the, and the Matabele drum took off and just ran fast. It's the fastest I've been on any horse. It was running, running so fast and the helmet blew off behind because those times, you know, they didn't have those good helmets they have now. It was only an elastic under here and it blew off. I lost the stirrup and the horse was, you know, just galloping quicker and faster and faster and faster. I couldn't manage to stop it and I was knocked by a tree like this and I don't remember anything after that. I woke up sitting on another horse and feeling like my head was full of jelly and I got a very bad brain concussion and I didn't ride for six months after that. But I'm fine and I kept on doing active competitions still after that. And here is the show jumping uh, training course. I actually remember having riding lessons here. And I'm so happy that the showground is still here and that the horses are still here uh, but now also some of the activity I have been told now the riding lessons are at a place called Trottover Equestrian Centre in Leopards Hill and on my way back I met uh, this man and what are you carrying on your head? Um, it's a uh, recyclable material okay and where do you get that from? I collect it from uh, market places and, and then you, you sell it? yes I sell it to the company Okay, so basically you're helping keep Lusaka clean. Yes, of yeah. course. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. But it's uh, getting dark soon, so we have to hurry on our way back. So thanks for watching and please subscribe so I can see you next time. Bye! Bye.